Uh, first of all, just want to say I'm proud of the guys for just sticking with it. We didn't have our best stuff. Had a really good game plan coming in, and those guys just made shots. We knew what to, what to expect, um, kind of knew what they were going to do, and it was even tougher in person. When you look at a team on on film, you know you can see that they're good, but then when you see them in person, they were great at everything that they did, and they executed, they made shots, and uh, we just outlasted them. You know, to be able to turn them over 25 times, that's what we have to do. We also shot 56 free throws, uh, even though we missed 19 of them. Uh, just really proud of my guys for just sticking in there and, uh, and getting this victory. Hey, Coach, 15 minutes into the game, they went 6 for 10 on three-pointers. They went 6 for 19 the rest of the way. What do you do different to make that transition? Well, we, we missed a couple of assignments on, on a couple of their shooters. Uh, we didn't close out properly like we should have. And then we went under the screen on number five, and he made every one of them that we went under, and we weren't supposed to be doing that. Once we made the adjustment, they had to switch, and we didn't switch. In the second half, we did. We started making a, a conscious effort to understand what was going on and be more aggressive on those guys while they were shooting threes and contesting more shots, and that, that worked in our favor. When you look over to the Yale sideline, especially when going into the overtimes, you see a lot of emotions, a lot of up and downs from their players. You look to your sideline, everybody's cool and even keeled. In your third game as head coach, how do you keep your team so at bay in those situations? Uh, well, that's just who I am as a, as a coach. Uh, I've always told my teams, every team that I've coached, if I don't panic, you don't panic. You know, take my temperament. We're going to play hard, but we're not going to panic. Not until the, the, the time goes off, then we can talk about it. But as long as there's time on the clock, we're going to stay cool and calm. And, you know, we, we kept our heads and uh, was able to pull the win out. Coach, how hard is it to do what Tyler Harris did at the end of regulation and hit those three in a row with the crowd watching you with that much time left? And, and I guess what's going through your mind? Did, did, did you think about Darius at all in those years? All those no, years? You, know, you know, honestly, I was – it shocked Tyler when he missed the first one of the, 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 the two shots that he had. He missed the first one, and he was, like, shocked. So when he got his time again to shoot those three, I knew he was going to make them. That's just how Tyler is. He relishes that moment to get a second chance to stick the dagger, and that's what he did. I wasn't worried about anything else. I knew he was going to make all three. He's built for that moment. Penny, what is this week? What have you learned about this team this week? It's obviously been, I mean, with A, you, you had – you lose Kareem. You have the LSU game, which is and and then this thing. What have you learned about your team? You know, I've learned that these uh, these guys are just resilient and they're tougher than I gave them credit for. Because I was like, hey man, we're not a really tough team. We got to get tougher. But you win games like this, you come back on LSU from being down nine at halftime and take the lead on the road at their building. You got a tough team. Now it's just a matter of just getting everything complete as far as growing together. Right now we're we're a little off. I would say we're a lot off. But we're making up for it with effort and heart and passion and winning big games. Hey, Coach, uh, you kept your jacket on for the whole first overtime. The second overtime, you took your jacket off. They didn't score until one minute, 17 seconds left in there, and you want an offensive explosion. Is there any correlation? Well, I hope so. And believe me, if we ever have to go to overtime again, that jacket's throwing off again, if that's going to give us the same luck. But, you know, I keep and miss uh, the first free throw. And I was thinking that it should have been over. But hey, I had to you know, keep my mind right on uh, what, we, what we needed to do in overtime. But I threw the coat off because it got, it got a little hot at that point. I was cool and calm until that point, And then I, I got a little hot. You, Penny, you mentioned you, know, you, you got just some things are just off right now. Um, it seemed like you were just in the half court running offense. There were some some issues just yep. obviously it's the third game but what what do you think needs to happen there is it just a matter of learning the system better or yeah what happened was you know we adjusted and it started going smaller and some of the smalls didn't know what we wanted to do from that position and that's up to us as coaches to uh, go through the entire how we're going to play in the game and practice instead of having the bigs do this and the guards do that because we're going to go small a lot because our smalls are so dynamic and they can do multiple things um, play multiple positions so we're going to make people play our game. We're going to have to understand. Our smalls are going to have to understand. And we made the adjustment uh, at halftime. We struggled a little bit with it in the first half, but in the second half, we kind of calmed it down. Coach, uh, after the Tennessee Tech game, you mentioned that freshmen were freshmen and that uh, after Harris' struggles, how far has he come in the two games since then? Well, he's kind of getting more comfortable. You know, Tyler's kind of trying to figure out where he can get his shots from. And uh, I told him in the second half to get extra aggressive. I ran one play for him, he hit the three. I ran another play for him, he hit the three, and then I knew he was going to get going. And he's the type of kid, once he gets going, he can fill it up. So he's learned so much in those two games because he's watching a lot of film. He's, uh, he's understanding his role more. 
and uh, he's just growing as a freshman. You know, he's growing. He's it's going to be uh, uh, growing pains, but I mean, he's growing up really fast. Davenport said that the, the play where he got fouled and, and went to the line actually wasn't for him, but was for, for Jeremiah. Can you take us through? Well, actually, the ending of it was for the nearest guy to go back door. The, the play was for uh, everyone to, to flash towards the ball, and then Jeremiah's man hopefully overplayed and went back door. But at the end, I said, if you're the closest man to the ball, now you have the back door. So that's why he was open. You know, and um, it, it wasn't initially for him, but the last part of it was if that didn't work, which it didn't, that he was the guy to go back door. And then how important was uh, what Bruton gave you off the bench tonight? It was very important because Kareem didn't really play as much as he wanted to at LSU. He's a veteran players, player. I saw him win games for the team last year, so I'm sure he's itching to be out there. And when we first started this, we wanted to really have our guards be dynamic and play our guards. Uh, but when Mike Parks came back and then you have Victor Eno and then Isaiah Maurice, you kind of get caught up in playing the big man game. But tonight we had to play our game, which is the guards. We had to open it up and play small ball. Hey, Coach, um, Jeremiah Martin, he finished the first half with three points. And then the second half, he was a little bit more involved and got a little bit more points. And he even said himself that he most likely had one of his worst free throw performances of his life. What, as a coach, did you tell him to, you know, make him feel comfortable to be on the court? Well, I mean, he's a veteran. He's been here before. Uh, free throws are something that you just have to work on. You know, and a lot of guys really don't like to work on free throws. They like to work on the ball handling. They like to work on their shooting, their go-to moves. But free throw shooting, man, it's, it's, it wins and loses games. We understand that more times than not, guys going to the line at the end of the game can seal the game with free throws or lose it by missing them. And we just got to keep continuing to work on our free throws and be serious about it. You've been in this type of game, you know, back and forth, thriller type of game, pretty much at every level, playing and now coaching mm -hmm. up to this college level. Which has been the most stressful for you? Well, the most stressful for me is coaching because as a player, I could, I could really do something about it being out on the court. But that's actually what's kept me calm throughout all of the – I've had so many close games and tough games like this in my career that when I get into these situations, I've learned from the wins that we've won in those close games and the losses. So I'm just thinking the entire time. So – as a player, it'd be less stressful for me to be out there than to be a coach. One more, one more question. Penny, <clears throat> you mentioned you're, you're cool and collected on the floor, but I imagine afterwards you guys are pretty excited. Can you sort of describe what that looked like in the locker room when you guys are finally? Yeah, it was, it was all you would think. It was all mayhem because we were so excited. Uh, we were almost giving this game away at home. You have to win your games at home. You cannot lose games at home, especially with what's ahead of us playing Oklahoma State in Orlando and the winner of Canisius and Villanova. I mean, we got to – we can't lose at home. That's something that we didn't do when I was in school. It's just like the thing in Memphis where we're like, hey, man, we do not lose games at home. We have to gut it out. We have to gut it out tonight. Every game is not going to be a blowout. But you learn from these type of games as well. Thank you. Thank you.